the legendary Porsche 911 arrives in India in its new generation. The BMW 8 Series, another brand new model from the Bavarian car maker Driven. And its technology all the way from MG for its Hector and from Hyundai for the upcoming venue. It's not every day that a global icon drives into our market. And yes, we've had the previous generations as well, but the brand new Porsche 911 is here in India, launching in its S and S Cabriolet avatars. Welcome to a brand new episode of CNB. I am Siddharth Vinayak Patankar, and with me is that global icon, a legend. We will have more details on the car here in India, also how it drives, that's coming up, of course. You had a chance to see our action-packed lineup, and it is quite an exciting episode, isn't it? So, let's jump straight into it. King Shook uh, got here to BIC a little bit before I did and got his hands on this car out on the track. The Porsche 911 has been a race car steeped in history and heritage. Since 1963, it's built up a reputation as being an everyday sports car. And today, 56 years and 7 generations later, we have with us the 8th generation all-new Porsche 911. It's been finally launched in India and there are two variants. Carrera S is priced at 1 crore 82 lakh rupees while the Carrera S Cabriolet is priced at 1 crore 99 lakh rupees. Both variants of the new generation 911 get updated 3-litre flat-six engines. These models make 444 brake horsepower, which is an increase of 30 brake horsepower over the previous generation model. The peak torque output is 530 newton meters, and now you also get the option of 8-speed PDK or Porsche double clutch automatic transmission, which is absolutely insane. And why I say this so? Because I've driven the car. The insides to get significant updates with the dashboard design being more angular. The multifunction steering wheel is new and the instrument console is also new with an analog ref counter flanked by digital pods on either side. The dashboard also houses a new 10.9 inch touchscreen infotainment system which gets Porsche communication management as standard on both variants. The good thing about the design of the 911 is that since 1963, the overall silhouette of the car has remained more or less similar. The flowing graceful lines, the circular headlamps and that really sharp bumper up front make for an excellent looking car. Of course, these do get a few changes. The car is 45mm wider up front and also the haunches at the rear, they are also broader. This means better stability and better cornering. The 911 new generation is built on the MMB platform which is again all new and makes for much better handling.
Now, the Porsche World Roadshow is a global property where the whole portfolio of cars travels to different markets and uh, you get a chance to experience the entire range. It's not just about one car, though of course today for us it is all about the 911 since it's just driven in. Now, you get goosebumps just standing next to this car, driving it, a whole different experience, but I have to move on and talk about another car that was indeed fun to drive. This is the revival in some senses of the 8 Series nameplate, but in many ways is a first model for uh, BMW. Now the 8 Series is already out in its Coupe Avatar globally, now available in its Cabriolet form. That's the car I had a chance to drive a few days ago in Portugal. Here is my review. Who would have thought that we'd live in an era where the flagship from BMW on the one hand would be one giant SUV and on the other a really large coupe or convertible like this one. Yes, it's not just the 7 Series anymore folks, it is a new range of cars that's defining what sits at the top end of BMW's overall portfolio. This car is the very latest 8 Series. The all-new BMW 8 Series appeared in its Coupe Avatar in the middle of 2018 and a few months down the line, it's time for the family to grow. BMW has used the 8 Series name in the 1980s and 90s, but this cannot really be called a successor to that car. Still, if you want to, call it a second generation. The 8 Series convertible has also now arrived and a four-door Grand Coupe body style will complete the family when it gets here by mid-2019. But let's stay focused on that new convertible, shall we? The 8 Series effectively replaces the previous 6 Series family, but is being positioned as more premium and sporty. This is largely true, as you shall soon find out. The 8 Series convertible is 4,851 mm long with a 2,822 mm wheelbase. It is 1902 mm wide and 1345 mm high. That makes it near identical in dimensions to the previous 6 convertible. Now, it's a tad wider but it is shorter in height and length as well as the wheelbase. But it is obviously more luxurious and better appointed and looks way sexier too. The car looks great to be honest. Low slung form, great proportions, very obvious width, especially in how the rear end has been styled with those wraparound recessed tail lights. The hood and flanks are very muscular and there are a couple of prominent character lines that emphasize the car's length along the side. The grille is kind of large yet very well executed. The headlights are the slimmest in BMW's lineup and they can be upgraded to laser light tech if you pay more. Material quality, equipment and yes, even the gadgets are a step up for sure. Virtual cluster, head up display, bigger touch screen with the latest iDrive 7.0 and the latest in connectivity and sound systems. Harman Kardon is standard, Bowers and Wilkins Diamond Surround is an option. The start-stop button, gear shifter and iDrive controller are finished in glass like we saw on the X5 and X7, but this is the first non-X model to get what BMW calls crafted clarity. The dash and door panels are all wrapped in leather. The car certainly exudes quality and class. There's a wind deflector that comes standard which can be popped on or off the rear seats. The roof folds up or down in just 15 seconds and can be operated at up to 50 km per hour. The previous 6 convertible did it in 19 seconds and only up to 40 km per hour for what it's worth.
While the car is not a 7 series based model, it does share its drive trains. The M850i X-Drive has the 520 bhp V8 petrol and there is also a 3 litre inline 6 diesel that powers the 840d X-Drive. Now BMW could bring us the convertible as a direct import, very small number of units and there could be a few takers for it. But you know what, they'd also have to import in this wonderful clean air and this beautiful blue sky which is why it's only going to be the hard top that comes to us and more likely than not, not the coupe, but uh, the grand coupe. Yes, it is likely we'll only get the 8 series grand coupe, but that car will only be revealed around June or July this year. So you might wonder why I am testing the convertible then. Well, three reasons why. First, because the engines we'll get will be shared across body styles and so will be the same. Second, it's a chance to see where BMW has taken the new 8 series family. After all, we never did drive the coupe as yet. And third, a different body style. A lot of the dynamics, performance and design elements will be similar. The new model offensive from BMW has been almost non-stop and so it's been one drive after the other every few months but I have to tell you that it's really comforting and exciting and reassuring and extremely satisfying the M850i and so uh, that part I have to say has been the big takeaway for me certainly what's kept a smile on my face The car uses BMW's latest V8 petrol motor with 68 bhp more power than its predecessor and peak torque is also bumped up by a massive 100 Nm all the way to 750 Newton meters. Two twin scroll turbos on this V8 engine by the way. And the first thing that strikes you when you start the engine and begin your drive is how quickly the power reaches the wheels. So despite its size, this thing can move. BMW has certainly made a huge effort to really come back to the center of what the brand was always all about. It seemed to have lost its way a few years ago, but like I said, come straight back full and center to that spot. And that is making cars that are just great to drive. The good part though is that they don't knock you around, they're not that stiff anymore. And so while you get all the dynamics that you want, you still get a fair amount of comfort and a sense of luxury, especially for a car like this, that is important. So yes, the 8 series betters the performance that was seen on the previous 6 by miles. The car belies its size and is quick, adept and very happy to be pushed through sharp corners and yet maintains superb control. The handling on this car is easily right up there with the very best. And the steering is on point. The 8 series gets active steering and all-wheel drive or X-drive as standard. The car's athleticism comes from there too. Active steering means the rear wheels also turn. And that gives you a sense of driving a more compact car. The all-wheel drive system works well as does the 8-speed Steptronic gearbox. Now that is common to both engine types. Now it's amazing kind of aerodynamics that engineers these days have been able to achieve. The car's acoustic levels inside even with the top down are amazing. You can hear the music really well, you can talk to the person next to you, take a phone call on the system as well and uh, in my case, not mess up your hair way too much. That's important. The car is fun to drive for sure and can take a fair amount of punishment and that leads me to wonder, no, salivate at the prospect of the M8 that is also expected later this year. Yes, more so than the Grand Coupe even though from a market point of view I should care about that more. On the downside, the cabin does feel a touch cramped, especially at the back, but in every other aspect the car certainly impresses and that is why the prospect of India getting the longer wheelbase 4-door Grand Coupe then really works. Expect that to only happen though around the end of this year or perhaps in February 2020.
At this end of the market, it's all about performance. Well, largely speaking anyway. But at pretty much every other price point and segment in the market, these days, increasingly, it's about technology that works for you. I am talking about things like connectivity or even safety that's now assisted by technology. And the good part is that you, the Indian consumer, cares about all of that just so much more that it's compelling the automakers to do a lot more with it as well. So the connected car is finally upon us. The new MG Hector and the Hyundai Venue, when they arrive in just a few days' time now, will have a whole lot of stuff going on that uh, cars in general till now have not. What am I talking about? If you haven't read about it already on our site, well, here are the details. Connected cars quote the brand new trend. And India is probably going to be at the center of it all. No, no. Because car makers are lining up products equipped with next gen connectivity features just for us. The first such example to come to the Indian market will be from the Hyundai stable, riding on its new subcompact SUV. The Venue. It's called Blue Link and comes with a total of 33 connectivity features, out of which 10 are India specific. Some of the features that Blue Link will offer in India are geofencing, speed alerts, SOS, panic notifications, destination sharing, and even roadside assistance. Hyundai has made sure that you can connect to the company's call centers at the press of a button. The company has rigorously tested the Blue Link technology in India, so much so that the voice guidance and voice recognition can identify Indian accented English. Well, it's always great to have an assistant and Hyundai provides that in the Blue Link app as well. Well, it's called the Blue Link Girl. I can't say it's, right? Because, well, it's technology at the end of the day. But you have all these features that are listed here that you get right from remote engine start stop which you can actually use your smartphone to start your engine. Uh, but all of that has to be well coordinated. Also, uh, there's remote climate control so you can uh, start stop your uh, air, co air con needs right from your smartphone and then get your car to the ambient temperature. All of this is available on your uh, smartphone and at the tip of your fingers. All this is possible thanks to the tamper-proof eSIM, which will be provided by Vodafone Idea. And yes, the data charges will be covered during the warranty period of the car. But Hyundai is not the only one getting into this game. MG Motor 2 is all set to bring in some segment-first connectivity features in its soon-to-be-launched and in fact, its first car in India, the Hector. MG calls its system iSmart. The system has been developed in collaboration with several technological partners like Cisco, Unlimit and Microsoft among others. The command center of the system is a vertically mounted 10.4 inch ultra large full HD infotainment display that comes with preloaded entertainment content and allows you to manage complete vehicle settings. It gets a machine embedded SIM which is 5G ready, making it future proof and helping developers integrate features like real time navigation, remote location, geofencing, emergency response, and much more. Furthermore, with smart connectivity, the Hector will also be getting software updates via over the air downloads, like firmware and feature updates, like much like on the smartphone. MG Motor India has tied up with Airtel to offer its customers free data too for the first few years. One of the key features and most important features offered in the MG Hector is its voice command system and we got a chance to check it out. Hello MG. Turn on the air conditioning. Switch on AC. Hello, MG. Hi, how can I help? Set temperature to 23 degrees. Temperature is set to 23 degrees Celsius. Just like in the venue, the MG Hector will offer a smartphone app for its customers 
which will give out information like the location of the car, tire pressure or if the doors are locked or not. The consumer can also turn on the ignition and switch on the air conditioner remotely too. It all sounds extremely promising then, especially for India because of the demanding customer base it has. Both the companies have spared no expense on making it possible and we are sure there are others who will follow soon. And that is pretty much all the time on this week's show. Please react to what you've seen because in many different ways, a lot of what you did see on today's show is very relevant to our market. So react to it. Keep your feedback coming. Please wear your seatbelts, wear your helmets on a bike. Bye-bye.